Cool. Tonight on CTV News, the on-campus CSU Stadium has been improved for $220 million. We have the details next. Plus, Fort Collins hit record-breaking highs today. We'll be with our meteorologist shortly to hear more about the warm temperatures and see what students are saying about the switchover from Ram CT to Canvas. All this and more on tonight's episode of CTV. Good evening, Rams, and welcome back to school. I'm Carson Bushjost. And I'm Caitlin Conley. Today, CSU was approved to receive $220 million in revenue bonds for the construction of the on-campus stadium. The money will be borrowed through revenue bonds that CSU will sell to investors. Now take a look here at the design of the new stadium with the renderings complete. The next step for the stadium is the Board of Governors meeting February 4th through the 6th. Our sports anchor is now with us. Grace, what do you think will be discussed during this meeting? Tony Frank will be presenting a plan to borrow $220 million through revenue bonds, which will be sold for 4 to 6 percent interest. If this plan is successful, they will be starting the stadium this summer and will be done by the 2017 football season. Thanks, Grace. And in other breaking news, today we had unseasonably warm temperatures and broke the January record today with a high of 71 degrees. Our weather anchor, Elizabeth Prassi, is with us now. Elizabeth, should we expect this warm front the rest of the week, or are we going to head right back into that winter weather? Well, Caitlin and Carson, to answer your question, while Colorado does have some bipolar weather, we are going to gradually cool down this week. Now, my question for you, is it still January, or did spring come early? Because it sure felt like spring yesterday and today, with temperatures well above average for this time of year. In fact, we actually set a record high of 74 degrees Monday, breaking the previous record from 1982. Then we also set a record high for the month of January yesterday. But if that wasn't enough, today we reached 71 degrees. Now that shattered the previous 45-year-old record of 65 degrees. The last time it was this warm was in 1970, and that was the year the Beatles released their 12th and final album. Now tonight things will cool down as we look out across the state. We can see it's going to be 34 in Lamar, 39 in Burlington, 31 in Lyman, and then across the I-25 corridor we're going to get into those mid-30s. Right now in Fort Collins, it is currently 45 degrees, and we do have a slight breeze out of the northwest at 8 miles per hour. And with those temperatures, we can see tonight we're going to cool down into those mid to low 40s. And then right around midnight, the clouds are going to keep us warm above freezing, but we will dip just below 40 degrees. Now my question is, will we see record high temperatures again tomorrow? I'll have the details coming up. Rams enjoyed the nice weather today, including checking out the amazing chalk art. The art around the plaza is in honor of the grand opening celebration of the LSC. Grand opening events will run for the next couple of days. Some of the events include the Spring Involvement Expo. CTV reporter Callie Vara will have more on this story Wednesday night. And with spring semester comes a new technology, Canvas. While Canvas offers improved tools for learning, students may have to deal with classes still running on RAM CT and teachers who haven't yet made that switch. CTV reporter Sierra Symes talks to students about their experience so far this semester. For students like junior nutritional sciences major Andrea Rapp, Returning to campus means letting go of RAM CT and getting to know the new Canvas. I think Canvas is a little bit more organized. It has a lot more functions, so I'm going to have to get used to it. Mike Palmquist, Associate Provost for Instructional Innovation, explains the benefits of Canvas. Wrapping all kinds of technology tools around the learning management system. They do give you more notifications right on the home page, so you can see exactly due dates of assignments and what everything is. And I also get an email every week that tells me due dates, which is pretty nice. Business administration major Michael Scadabo is concerned about continuity between RAM CT and Canvas. I, I, I wouldn't have minded it so much if it was if all the professors had required it, but like now like one of my professors is still using Blackboard. Now according to my, Mike Palmquist, RAM, RAM CT will no longer be around by spring of next year. CTV reporter Rachel Vigil braved the chilly weather this weekend to attend the annual Polar Plunge. Check it out. Saturday at the South Bay of Horsetooth Lake, over 100 people watched and took the plunge into a chilling 37 degree water for athletes in tandem. <laughs> Although this may look like fun, the Polar Plunge raised over $7,000 and it's beneficial for so many athletes. I started because I had <clears throat> done races on my own and I decided that it was more um, 
appealing to do it with somebody else. I couldn't do it. I actually saw a video of Dick Hoyt do it with his son, and that was that's what spurred it on for me to uh, give my or share my passion of doing triathlons and running events with other people that couldn't do it. Dennis has done many triathlons since he started the program in 2008 and has changed many lives as well, such as PJ. PJ is able to um, race in um, triathlons, marathons. He did the Boulder Ironman last year, which is like a 140 mile um, event with the founder Dennis. And it just gives him an opportunity to be out in the um, public, in nature, doing things that he can't do on his own. If you would like to donate, sponsor, or compete with athletes, check out athletesintandem.org. With CTV, I'm Rachel Vigil. A Fort Collins brewery closed on Sunday. The Wyoming-based Freedom's Edge Brewing Company closed its Fort Collins location after less than a year of operation. Freedom's Edge is the first brewery to close in Fort Collins in more than a decade. Freedom's Edge looked to focus on distribution in Cheyenne and later looks forward to distributing to Colorado. Brewer Shane O'Keefe looks forward to finding a way to keep a local presence here in Fort Collins. Renovations in Old Town Square are set to begin February 11th, a project that will cost $3 million to the city. These renovations include making the square more open and updating old infrastructure. The changes will make the square more suitable for concerts and festivals. Completion of the project is set for just before New West Fest, one of Fort Collins' most popular events. Further restrictions on smoking in Fort Collins might be on the horizon after a city council vote February 3rd. If passed, the ban will include an expanded downtown area, nature parks and trails, and most city-operated events and festivals. Reporter Sierra Symes investigates further at City Hall. A ban may keep smokers from lighting up at city-operated events and festivals and city-owned areas including Old Town Square after February 3rd. Mayor White Cunot will vote with city council. This would put a pretty well comprehensive ban across the city. Enforcing the ban will be a voluntary compliance. No, I, I can't imagine putting police force out on the bike trails trying to monitor people who smoke. And residents are ready, according to Compliance Supervisor Polly Lurdensen. I think based on the results we've gotten from citizen surveys, the majority of the community will respond positively. To learn more about the ban or the time and location of the council meeting, go to fcgov.com slash council. Coming up after the break, both Elizabeth and Grace will be back for their full segment. Stay tuned. The Ram Skeller offers a traditional pub menu 20 beers on tap, and even fresh to order pizza coming soon. Stop by Sweet Sensations for a delicious bakery item, espresso, or any other coffee needs you may have. Hi, welcome to Aspen Grill. Aspen Grill is a student-operated restaurant located in the University Club. The food court features a number of different restaurants to satisfy your needs between classes. Welcome back, Rams. I'm weather anchor Elizabeth Prossi with your latest weather update. Now, unfortunately, tomorrow will not be quite as warm as it has been these last few days, but we will still see temperatures well above average for this time of year. Looking out across the state, we can see Grand Junction is going to heat up to 51, Telluride 42, Gunnison just below the freezing mark at 29 in the I-25 quarter. Look at that, 62 in Pueblo, 58 in Colorado Springs, 59 in Denver, and then 59 degrees in Fort Collins. So let's take a look at your Wednesday planner. As you can see, we've got sunshine and and lots of it, but we will see winds come in tomorrow afternoon. So we're only going to heat up into those upper 50s, not quite the 71 degrees that we saw today. Now looking at your seven day forecast, we can see that while we started off the week pretty warm, we are going to gradually cool down. As you can see Saturday, we do have a chance of snow. Now this is a lot nicer than what the poor northeast is getting with winter storm Juno. There are records of 30 inches of snow right now and winds of 50 plus miles per hour. So on Saturday, we're going to see that rain snow mix in, but it's not going to be the two inches that poor Boston is getting right now. And then we're going to heat up about 50 degrees on Monday. So overall, it's going to be a lot nicer than it is in the northeast. So Rams, enjoy this warm weather while you can and have a great week. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. Grace Reeder is in the Sports Center with the latest in Rams sports. 
Thanks, guys. If you haven't quite tuned into CSU Sports since you got back from break, you have missed a lot. As we discussed earlier, CSU is building a new on-campus stadium, and Jim McElwain moved to Gainesville, Florida to coach the Gators, which left CSU with an open head coach position. That position was filled by Georgia's old offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo. Georgia had the number one scoring offense last year, which put CSU in good shape to be successful again next season. Garrett Grayson graduated and headed to the Combine. D. Hart declared he'd be leaving for the NFL draft, and CSU lost several talented offensive linemen as well. Enough about football. If that was all news to you, then you probably also missed the best start to basketball in CSU history. The team is now 18-2, ranked second in the Mountain West and 24th in the USA Today poll. The Rams won their whiteout game last Sunday against San Diego State, 79-73, and they are currently in Boise to take on the 14-6 Broncos. The game will be on ESPNU, and it airs at 9. CSU is going to have a tough end of their season. The Mountain West Division is incredibly good this year, and it seems that from here on out, each division game gets tougher and tougher. In order for the Rams to pull off a win tonight against Boise, and to pull off a difficult season ahead, both J.J. Avila and Daniel Bejarano need to be on their game. In both losses this season, one of these two key players were shooting under what they usually do. Avila shoots around 15.7 points per game, leading the team, and this week was named Mountain West Player of the Week. Bejarano leads the team in assists and three-point shots. With both stars on point, CSU is a formidable opponent. Back to you guys. Coming up next, see who, has, who is wrapping their way to win the annual Clash of the Titans competition. We'll be right back. Hello Rams, my name is Sydney Schultz and I'll be your official Lori Student Center tour guide. For our first stop, we arrive at the Campus Information Desk in the Land Grant Wall. As we move through the building, we enter the East to West Corridor, featuring beautiful natural lighting and open architectural design. This is Sydney signing out from your home away from home and Lori Student Center. While most students were getting ready for their Saturday night activities, some of our students went to the annual rap battle called Clash of the Titans at the LSC. This was the fourth year of this free event and it continues to gain popularity each year. This past Saturday, a rap battle called Clash of the Titans 4 brought in many students as well as many local artists from around Colorado to compete. Determined Nation Magazine and ASCSU helped to put on the event to support the United Men of Color. Yeah. The night consisted of guest appearances from Kent Washington, DJ Exclusive, PC, and CSU's own dance group, Classified, to help get the crowd excited. We actually wanted to provide a platform for Colorado uh, uh, artists, you know, local artists, to get local support. Because oftentimes you get, you know, artists that, I mean, local individuals who support the uh, artists in the industry. We wanted to take a different spin to it where we make it, uh, uh, you know, easy and accessible for local artists to get the local love. Kent Washington, the host of the show, helped to facilitate the battles as well as performed one of his songs for the crowd and gave credit to Determination Magazine for his success. But um, they've always showed love and they've given me a platform to show my voice and to be an artist and to be free. So uh, when I had the opportunity, I couldn't say no. The winner of Clash of the Titans was CJ Calvert, who goes by PG, or Poetic Genius, a professional battle rapper who was third in the state of Colorado. This was his third time competing in this competition and his second consecutive win. He also performed one of his songs at the beginning of the night. I don't know, it's, I'm, I've always been a writer. So, you know, it takes nothing to come up with a concept to destroy somebody, you know, and I've been doing, I've been battle rapping for two years. I've been doing music for 13 years. Clash of the Titans 4 proved to be an exciting event for CSU and each year continues to grow with popularity. Thanks to Termination Magazine for the audio clip. And thanks for watching CTV News this evening. Be sure and watch all our shows live Monday through Thursday at 8 o'clock. And if you happen to miss a show, you can watch full episodes on thecollegian.com or check us out on the new Collegian app. Good night, everyone.